The people of the last days. We have heard many things about the end of the world. We have read it in the Bible about how the stars will fall, how heaven will shake, and many terrible things will happen to earth. The Bible did not just talk about what will happen to earth alone, but also the kind of people that will be on earth at that time, and the type of sins that will be taking over the world at that time. We should know that these sins are taking over the earth. The reason for this is because the spirit of the Antichrist is slowly being released bit by bit. Many people have been deceived and they have gone the wrong way. 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 5 gave us the major sins that will exist on earth in the last days. The opening verse of this chapter started with, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Dangerous times will come, a time that evil will prevail, a time that will be no big deal to do evil. Adultery will be the order of the day. 2 Timothy 3 verses 2 through 5 gave the attributes of the people who will exist on earth. What are the attributes we should expect from the people in these last days, or what are the behaviors we can see in people in the last days? 1. Selfish people will abound. The Bible says men shall be lovers of themselves. All they will think of is themselves and not about others. These people are everywhere in the world today. You will see the husband being selfish, the wife is selfish, they don't care about each other. How on earth can you be a mother and be selfish? Or how can you be a father and be selfish? Refusing to grow up and take care of your responsibilities, that is selfish. Selfishness will abound. People will love themselves more than anything else. We may think these people will only be unbelievers, but to be sincere, in churches today, we have a large percentage of selfish people. These days we see the term celebrity pastors. Does that even sound right to you? Celebrity pastor. You see, in churches now, the name of the pastor is mentioned more than the name of Jesus. Some people are obviously in need of the church. You know them, you see them, but you don't care what happens to them. Some people have asked you for help. You knew you could do something, but you refused. How have you been selfish? With what have you been selfish? Selfish people are covetous. They are takers. They don't care about anyone else. They covet other people's properties. They are also proud. If you see anyone who is selfish, they don't always acknowledge the fact that God helped them. They are always feeling like they achieved by their powers only. They are proud and full of evil. Many people will say they give to people. They will say they care about other people. But do you pray for people? If all you do is pray for yourself alone and you don't pray for people of the country, you are selfish. If you don't pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ, you are selfish. If you are like this, you are no different from those who did not give at all. There are people on the mission field trying to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus. You cannot send money and you cannot even pray for them. You cannot dedicate time to pray for people who are working hard to make sure that the gospel gets to the corners of the earth. You are selfish. Pray for your country. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your children. Pray for the church of God and pray for the people of God. Someone asked a pastor how people can pray for more than one hour. She said, what are they praying about? The pastor told her to write down all the things she needed in her life and she did. The pastor went ahead and asked her to write all of the name of her family and her friends and the people who were not her friends. After writing all of them, the pastor told her to go and pray for all the things she wants and then say the same prayer for all of the people that she wrote down the names of. She got back the following week and told the pastor she understands why people pray for more than one hour now. If you pray for people, if you pray for your country, there is a peace that runs through you. Your spirit feels peace and love for others. The second characteristic of the people in the last days is unholy people will multiply. If you speak blasphemy, you are unholy. If you are slanderous, if you are unforgiving, if you don't have self-control, you are unholy. We can see these people in the world today and they are everywhere. They are not holy, they are full of evil. All they can think about is how to commit evil. 
They don't forgive people. They have hate in them, and they have allowed bitterness to take control of their lives. We have families where they don't forgive each other. All they think of is how to get revenge. You will see people killing each other, and that is because of an unforgiving spirit in them. They hate each other, and they will find a way to destroy each other. Unholy people will multiply, and they are multiplying. If you are unholy, you are not of God. If you allow the lust of the eyes to take over you and make you fall into temptation, you are unholy. Are you unholy? Have you allowed people to trick you into doing evil in the sight of the Lord? Many people have gone outside of Christ because of the kinds of people they are following. If you are a Christian and you don't have the spirit of self-control, it would be easy for you to fall into temptations. Today in the world, if you choose holiness and you refuse to do what others are doing, they will call you names. It is now like a bad thing to be holy. It is a bad thing to refuse to do some ungodly things that they do now. They label you and call you boring. Not many people can take this intimidation and for that reason they have gone into the world. The time is here and holiness is becoming scarce. Unholy habits are now creeping into the church and we have made them to be a normal thing. Any ungodly thing in the house of God is not normal. We need to tell ourselves the truth. We need to let people know the truth. We have to stand for holiness no matter what. The third sin is that they will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. The world will be lovers of fornication more than lovers of God. The world will be lovers of adultery more than lovers of God. Let me say it again, am I pressing anyone's button yet? The world will be lovers of the internet more than lovers of God. The world will be lovers of sports more than lovers of God. You will see people missing church or missing prayer meetings to watch their sports games. These people will never partake in anything that has to do with God because they don't love God. They satisfy their selfish desires first before thinking of any other thing. Anything they find trending, they always want to be a part of it. These people don't care what they will have to go through to get these things. They just don't care. If you are like this, if you have placed something else in your heart to be above God, the love of God is not in you. That is what the Bible says in 1 John 2 verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I ask you today, do you love pleasure more than you love God? If you love God, prove it by following his commandments. John 14 verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. The fourth thing is having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Unfortunately, many professing Christians are falling into this category. Embracing a particular theory of imputed righteousness while rejecting the power of the living Christ to produce the fruit of godly and holy character in their lives. Those who have a form of godliness are those who make an outward display of religion. On the outside, they walk like a Christian, talk like a Christian, look like a Christian, but they don't live like one. Behind closed doors, they live a life of sin. Behind closed doors, they openly indulge themselves in sin. They present themselves as godly, but it is all for show. They speak of God and live in sin, and they are fine with that arrangement. They appear to be holy on the outside, but they are evil. The false prophets, false pastors, and all other agents of Satan that the Bible warned us about fall into this category. They always appear to be holy, but they have rejected the true holiness. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They pretend to be called by God, but they are not. These people are in churches today. They are manipulating people. They are leading people astray. They portray themselves to be what they are not. Coming to church just because you don't want to miss the Sunday service, but you don't care about what they talk about or listen to what they talk about, makes you become like this. Chasing after holiness is not a church, one day a week thing. Each and every day we are instructed clearly to chase after holiness. At the end of these lists, Paul wrote, from such, turn away. 
You need to run from these people. You need to identify them and never be a part of them. These people are consumed by the spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit is working in them to go against God. They are doing the things they ought not to because they are being influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist. It is time for us to open our eyes and run from these people because they will always come at us to make us fall. We are living in a perilous time and we must hold on to Jesus and never let go. God bless you.